Next, let's talk about maintenance. It's a good idea to have your developer or agency stick around after deployment to assist with any bug fixes, errors, things that may not have been accounted for in testing after you go live with the application. Make sure you know that somebody on your team is going to know how to perform maintenance tasks after everything gets turned over to you just because you know you're going to run into times when you know, maybe there's a variable in the system that has what the current month is and you need to flip it to the next month or the next year or um, you know anything custom that has to happen that you've accounted for who is going to take on that task on your team after you have your application built you should have some sort of mechanism for enhancement and requests you know a lot of SAS programs what they'll do is you know, they'll create some kind of um, you know, board where people can post their idea and have other people upvote it and you know see how many um, you know, upvotes a particular um, feature guest gets um, you know others just have you fill out a form and they review it others don't take any kind of uh, feature requests and, uh, you know, and they just come up with the ideas on their own always a good idea to take the feedback of your customers <laughs> just because they're the ones paying you and, and buying your product. So you want to make sure that they're happy. And not only are they happy, but they feel like they're part of your application. And, you know, just make sure that you have uh, you know, enhancements on your list in order to make your application easier to maintain, especially if you have multiple um you know manual tasks like for example um you know to save some money you might say hey look we're not going to have an automated deployment mechanism we're going to have somebody you know manually copy the code to the server run you know these commands and, and have um the application update that way you know well if that's the case you may want to invest in having a way to automate that Anything that you have that's hard coded into your code, and you know what I mean by that, uh, I'll explain in, in a second. You should find a way to make you know a screen or, or setting in your application. You know, maybe it's an administrator menu um, that you have in there that's only available to certain people, where you can specify those things. Um, so, going back to what I said about things being hard coded, an example of this is you know let's say that. You know, everybody's talking about AI and you know, chat GPT now. Um, so, you know, let's say you have an application that interacts with chat GPT. Well, in order to interact with chat GPT, you have to get um, what's called an API token that lets you, you know, issue requests to it and, you know, it'll return your responses. And, you know, it knows based on that token, um, you know, who to charge um, since it's not free for, for developers. So if you have your API key, somebody might go and, you know, put it into your code so that way, um, you know, it automatically goes against chat. Now, those tokens can be changed over time. And it's possible that, you know, depending on what you're looking to do in the future, maybe you white label your application to um, another another group. Well, you don't want that other group to be using your API token because then you're going to get charged for all of the uh, commands that that they do, right? So rather than having to go, um, you know, into the code and change it and then get, provide the code and tell the other company, hey, you've got to change this in your code, you know, it may not be um, a viable option to do something like that versus you can just make a menu setting where you know enter your api key for chat gpt here and then um you know if you go and white label it you can tell people hey you know your customer hey deploy this solution and now go into your menu and in your setup screen change the uh, you know set this your api key for chat gpt much easier and more user friendly to do that than to tell them, you know, copy paste code onto your server, and open your code, um, 
change this value, then recompile your code, then you know, uh, all the steps that, that are involved in, in the process. If you run into any kinds of common errors uh, over the course of the uh, development or even after go live, those types of things, if there are ways to modify your code to prevent those types of errors, you should definitely look into that. Um, you know, something else that's kind of often overlooked is logs for the server. Someone runs into an issue and they say, hey, this failed. Um, you know, and now you have to have somebody go onto your server, open up log files and look through it. You know, there are a lot of issues with that where, you know, you have to give somebody server level access to be able to view the log. And that might not be somebody that you want to give server level access to. Um, so if you can make those logs available, inside the application rather than someone having to go to the server you know now you can keep your, your security model much tighter um, you know you want to make sure you're also frequently testing the application for defects and just you know try to use it in ways that um, you didn't think about as you were building it to try to find you know if, if i go through um you know my process and say there are three steps a b and c and you know, it, the software was designed so that first you do A, then you go to B, you do B, and then you go to C, right? Well, what if somebody decides to do that out of order, whether you know, not knowing um, that they have to do it in order, or maybe they accidentally click something and they do B, then A, then C, is it gonna work that way? Are they gonna run into uh, an error message that pops up that says, hey, you've gotta do um, A first, and then you can go to B, and then you can go to C, or is the application just going to crash? So, you know, just because you know how the application needs to be used and what order it needs to be in, you need to make sure that other people you know, know that as well and are prevented from doing things outside of the order that that it needs to be. You know, the absolute best case scenario is, you know, if uh, option B or step B isn't even available until A is complete. Um, you know, but you may have made all three available. So as you go through, if you start to see, well, if somebody does B first, then A, and then C, I want to enhance my application so that way you have to go through the process in the order it was meant for. Otherwise, you know, we have to prevent them from going to the steps that they should um, go to out of order. Never trust um, your users to know or do the right thing. Um, you know, sometimes it's not with even with bad intentions that bad things happen, you just never wanna be in a spot where it's an acceptable action for somebody to do something they're not supposed to do. Um, you know, that's gonna uh, backfire on you very fast. At some point, you know, it doesn't have to be right after you go live with your application. You may wanna get a second opinion on the state of the application and, um, you know, some improvement opportunities from you know a different developer or agency than who built your application. Uh, if you do, just be aware of other interests at play. Uh, it is in everybody's best interest to tell you that your application sucks and that you should rebuild it, you know, in another programming language or um, you know something like that, right? Why? Because if they do that, then that means that they get the business for doing an entire implementation versus. You know, saying, hey, just add a button to this screen and, and you're okay. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're aware of that and you protect against it, right? So uh, somebody tells you, oh, yeah, this whole application is horrible. You need to re rewrite it. Okay, you know, why? What are my error, um, you know, areas of failure, um, you know, my potential issues that come up? Uh, you know, why is it going to fail going this way? And make sure you make them justify it and you know maybe you know they give you that feedback and you say well i don't know if they're right or wrong and you you get another opinion on top of that to say hey look somebody approached me with these concerns are they valid or are they not and you know if somebody knows that they're not getting work out of it that you know what they're just getting is you know maybe a paid engagement for um you know helping you decide what points are, are valid and which ones aren't, you know, then maybe you can be a little bit more trusting of that second opinion that you get. Uh, 